Welcome, one and all, to the ancient journey. If you like the video, please give us a like and a share, and if you're into our content, please subscribe. It helps grow the channel, and it keeps us producing these videos. Today's journey, the Bayou Strangler, Ronald Dominique. It happens all the time in nature, so we shouldn't really be surprised now, should we? Sometimes the most innocent looking creatures are the most deadly. Have you ever seen a slow loris, cute and cuddly with those big eyes and that expressive face? They're called a slow loris because they move, well, slow. Harmless enough, right? The slow loris is actually quite venomous. How about those cute panda bears? Fuzzy on the outside, panda bears actually will attack humans and have a lethal force to back up their bad attitudes. Leopard seals are quite innocent looking until you take a peek in their mouths. Rows of sharp teeth line the mouths of the third largest seals in the world and they are notoriously aggressive. These animals are all good at presenting what appears as harmless to us on the outside, only to be deadly predators on the inside. So we shouldn't be surprised when we discover that a serial killer, one who murdered at least 23 people, was able to disguise himself, hide in plain sight as it were, and avoid capture by appearing to be harmless. Although hidden was the publicity this normally might have received, nature was at it again, this time hiding the end result of these murders by wrapping them all together behind the eye wall and the destruction of Hurricane Katrina. So just how far back did this camouflage go? Well, we can trace it back to the beginning. Ronald Joseph Dominique was born in Thibodeau, Louisiana in 1964 to a poor family in a poor trailer park on the outskirts of a poor city. Ronald's life was hard, dirt poor and hard scrabble, but despite this, he graduated high school in 1983. In high school, the camouflage was already starting to show itself. Ronald battled weight issues, poor health, and low self-esteem. He was known to be unpopular, a poor communicator, and was the victim of constant bullying. Much like the animals at the start of this story, these bullies picked on who they thought was weak and harmless. They really didn't know what they were dealing with. Further complicating his life, Ronald discovered that he was gay and had taken to visiting a local gay bar on several occasions. He was seen there by classmates, which caused more bullying, but true to his nature, Ronald just put on another layer of camouflage and denied the entire story. Ronald studied computer science in college, but quickly dropped out due to a lack of interest. It wasn't long before his idle hands became the devil's workshop and Ronald was in trouble. In 1985, he was arrested for sexual harassment and had to pay a fine. Due to his poor social skills and limited education, Ronald ended up working in several low-skilled jobs to earn money, but those jobs didn't fit a wild animal like Ronald very well. He was frequently fired. He retreated back home living off relatives until trouble struck again. In 1994, he was arrested for drunk driving, managed to pay only a fine, which perhaps emboldened him for his next crime, rape. Ronald, you see, could only wear the cute and fuzzy costume for so long. Eventually, the wild animal had to be unleashed, and it was when he attempted to murder and rape a stranger. But by some odd stroke of luck that Ronald always seemed to have, the case was dismissed when the victim could not be located. Ronald continued to live his life as a gay man, spending much of his time in gay bars and dressing as singer Patti LaBelle. So while Ronald didn't fit in when he was in high school, it seemed as though he could find a home in the gay community, but it wasn't to be. He was unable to ever establish any real relationships and in general was looked down on by the gay community in the area. Ronald had been bullied enough. He was tired of wearing the costume of the innocent and the harmless. As a monster, he would roar the loudest. As a chubby, balding pizza delivery man in his thirties, he would never be a suspect. But underneath the harmless exterior, a beast lie in wait. Keeping with the true nature of all predators, Ronald's prey was to be the weakest he could catch. Homeless, drug-addicted men 
would make the perfect target. Easy to lure with promises of drugs, sex, and money. Weak enough from their lifestyle to overpower and be dominated. Ronald would stalk his prey during walks, trips driving around, or in the gay bars he frequented. A popular lure would be he would set out a promise of sex for his victims from his supposed girlfriend. Ronald would lure them back to his ramshackle trailer, overpower and rape them, then murder them and dump the bodies. The thrill for Ronald wouldn't end there. He was more than happy to enjoy some publicity for these murders. For once in his life, if only to himself, he would be famous, notorious. He would dump the bodies where they would be sure to be found. In time, he would look in the newspapers every day, waiting for the shine to be placed on his shoulders when he read of the monster terrorizing Louisiana. His first victim was a 19-year-old man in 1997. Ronald picked him up when he was hitchhiking. He was found in a ditch along the highway with water in his lungs, indicating he'd been drowned. The predator was now fully unleashed. The next two victims were claimed in 1997 as well. Ronald strangled 20-year-old Gary Pierre and also killed 38-year-old Larry Ranson. From 1998 to 1999, Ronald committed six murders, killing 27-year-old Oliver LeBanks, 16-year-old Joseph Brown, 18-year-old Bruce Williams, 34-year-old Mitchell Johnson, 21-year-old Angel Magia, and 21-year-old Manuel Reed. In 2000, Ronald killed 23-year-old Michael Vincent and 20-year-old Kenneth Randolph. 26-year-old Anoka Jones was claimed in 2002, and then the predator changed his hunting grounds. Ronald found a job with an electric company that allowed him to roam the community of Bayou Bu, checking levels of power supplies in remote areas of the city. Perfect. Ronald then murdered 19-year-old Detrell Woods, and in 2004 it was 46-year-old Larry Matthews, then 21-year-old Michael Barnett. The calendar turned to 2005, and Ronald turned to more carnage. And out at sea, more carnage was preparing itself to arrive. In August, Hurricane Katrina was preparing to race inland, unleashing devastation upon Louisiana. But that didn't slow Ronald down in the least. He would be the bigger monster of the two. 22-year-old Leon Lorette was his next victim, then 31-year-old August Watkins. A few days later, it was 23-year-old Kurt Cunningham, 28-year-old Alonzo Hogan, and 17-year-old Wayne Smith. By now, Louisiana was a scene of abject wreckage from Katrina, but Ronald pushed on, even as Katrina dissipated. In the fall of 2005, Ronald murdered 40-year-old Chris Deville, 21-year-old Nicholas Pellegrin, and 27-year-old Christopher Sutterfeld. Sutterfeld was most likely Ronald's last victim. By now, Ronald was back to being unpopular. The newspaper headlines didn't scream his crimes any longer. They were all devoted to the mess Katrina had caused, and Ronald's victims were not always the type to be missed. He preyed on the homeless, the drug addicted, and even known pedophiles. Despite his semen being found on several victims and his method of murder being similar, Ronald was not caught. His disguise was working. The pudgy bald guy seemed to be harmless. 2005 became 2006, and Ronald had let someone see the monster and lived to tell about it. Ricky Wallace, a resident of Bayou Blue, had contacted the police with a story to tell. A man, Ronald Dominique, had lured Ricky to his trailer with the promise of sex with Ronald's girlfriend. Soon after, Ronald had offered to tie Ricky up, but with no girlfriend present, Ricky decided to leave. Ricky was a known drug addict, and police were skeptical, but still had a job to do and went to cage up the monster, Ronald Dominique. He was interrogated, held at the police station, and was asked to donate a blood sample, which he did. The beast had allowed his true self to show. Police now had his DNA, and bells started to ring. The DNA had a match for the murders of Oliver LeBanks and Manuel Reed. An arrest warrant was issued. And in December of 2006, the serial killer, 
Ronald Dominique was captured at a homeless shelter. True to his cuddly exterior, he told police he knew they would catch him, and he had just moved into the homeless shelter as not to inconvenience his sister, who he had been living with. He tried his hardest to appear harmless, offering help to police with their investigation. After all, he was a good guy, just a little misunderstood. He told them that the victims had all wanted to be tied up and abused so they could earn some money, but he claimed that if they changed their minds, he would have gladly let them go. He refused to admit he was guilty. It was all his victims' fault. Ronald is now behind bars, sentenced to several life sentences without the possibility of parole. The Bayou Strangler was finally caged. Thanks for watching. And thanks for sharing the journey.